the 12 ordinary men. I am talking about the disciples of Jesus Christ. We have Peter, Andrew, his brother, number two. And then we have James and John. Then you have Philip. You have Bartholomew. Have you heard of Bartholomew? Right? Like many people, never heard about you. But you play a role in the kingdom of God. And things happen because of your presence. Although we don't know you, you're still significant in Jesus' name. Then we have Thomas, Matthew. Then we have James. Then we have Libius. He went by the name of Thaddeus. Then we have Simon the Zealot. And then we have Judas Iscariot. These are the ordinary men that Jesus selected. Just a synopsis in terms of their giftedness. Not one of them were renowned for scholarship. Number two, they had no track records of orators or theologians. Number three, they were all too prone to mistakes, misstatements, right? Wrong attitudes, lapses of faith, and bitter failure. These 12 guys were prone to that. This is the government that Jesus sets up to run things on earth on behalf of heaven. Number four, they spanned the political spectrum. One was a former zealot, and then you had Matthew, the tax collector. Two different sides of the ballgame. God calls them both. And they have to work together, although they don't have anything in common. Two guys that, if Simon could find Matthew in the corridors, that would be the last we would hear of Matthew. That's how the zealots hated tax collectors. About seven of them were fishermen. And then we have others who were tradesmen and craftsmen. Jesus had to go into the wilderness to fast for 40 days and 40 nights. This is our Lord. This is our God. This is the ruler of the universe. Why did he have to do that? This is just a revelation that I got. And it blew my mind because uh, I was just thinking, if you knew that these were the guys that God was going to give you, to be the government of the church, you would also fast for 40 days and 40 nights. <laughs> These 12 guys, you and me, can we be chosen? Maybe you feel worthy of being chosen. But when I look at these guys and I look at the selection process of Jesus, he knew exactly what he was up against. You know, I just took some time uh, to look at, you know, ordinary and uh, <laughs> I love looking at words. I love spending time uh, just breaking down words, you know. So, um, ordinary men, regular men. I just want to go into the words because according to the dictionary, it, ha it has its meanings. But it does not just have one meaning. Many times we gravitate towards the meaning that is common. But it is important to investigate the words completely. These were... 12 ordinary men. These were 12 men Jesus selected just as they are. They were just plain men. They weren't mixed. They were just men. Ordinary men. And I'm drinking ordinary water. Ordinary water. H2O. Ordinary water. There are nutrients in there that will sustain life. From ordinary water, I'm able to live. We many times look for the extraordinary. So we'll buy the water, but I want it to be a bit sweeter. But I don't want diabetes. It feels like, or it seems like, that when you add, or when you, when you want something extraordinary, and this is not altogether negative. Because when you look at the words, it's not necessarily negative. It's extraordinary spells, wow. It's bl it blows my mind. Ordinary blows Jesus' mind. Ordinary to Jesus is extraordinary. Nothing added. Nothing subtracted. Because the minute you add sweetener to H2O, you subtract it from ordinary. You subtract it from what's pure and what's real and what's genuine and what is just as it is.
Jesus selected these men just as they are. Jesus selected you. God called you just as you are. I can use anybody who's consistent than somebody who does things when they feel like it. Are you regular at doing good? Are you regular at obeying God? These guys were regular at flopping. Jesus looked at the fact that they were regular and chose them as they are. And he can switch and change the drug dealer who regularly sells drugs effectively in the community and consistently than use an irregular Christian. God is awesome. What makes God incredible is the fact that he is credible. What will make you incredible will be the fact that you are credible. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 26. You see your calling. How that not many wise men, this is now after the flesh, not many mighty men after the flesh. Not many noble men or women or children after the flesh are called. Why, why, why am I saying this? Because when God looks, God looks at the heart. God doesn't see the way I see. God doesn't see the way you see. Because we look according to the flesh most of the time. And that's the reason why we miss the things of the spirit. We look for spiritual results with carnal eyes. Let's read on verse 27. But God, God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. God hath chosen the abased things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not. <laughs> to bring to naught things that are, you might not exist to people. Jesus, our God, chooses the things that are not, but you're not a naught. According to people, you are not, but you're not a naught. You're not a zero to God. He chooses the base things of this world. He chooses those things and those people that are despised of men. He knows exactly what he chose in you. God does not choose you in your current state. God chose you long before the foundations of the world. Your current state might be a mess. Your current state might be a situation where you think like, I am not worthy of anything. But God knows your frame. God knows your essence. God knows who he has created. He created you in his image. And in his likeness created he, you, and I. And on that basis, God makes his selection. Not according to the way you see or I see. And you are part of that building process. You are part of the building blocks of God. You are worthy of the selection because God sees you as you are. And he loves you just as you are. So God always looks for a vessel. God is interested in you as the vessel. A vessel, maybe of Huda and Stubble, that he turns around to be a vessel of honor. A vessel of precious gold and jewels. He turns you into, but he just takes you as you are. And he converts you and transforms you into what he needs you to be. So he's looking for a vessel. Somebody places it like this, and I really just want to say this to us in closing. We are whistles. The wind blows through us. We make the noise. We are heard. Because of the wind that blows through us. We are prophets. We speak on behalf of whichever wind blows through us. The spirit in which you are doing it. The spirit that blows through you. Is recognized through your noise. 
God never blows the whistle on anybody. God uses the whistle. You are the whistle. We are the whistle. We are the vessels. We are the ordinary people that God wants to use. He's not necessarily turning you into an extraordinary person. God sees the ordinary as extraordinary. 